live from New York. It's a Grant the Movie and TV Guy review show, and I'll tell you right now, I gotta watch an entire show of Keegan Michael Key and Keenan Thompson beating up some Muppets. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, hi everyone. Again, it's me, Grant the Movie TV Guy, and we're talking about this week's SNL, which is hosted by uh, the great Keegan Michael Key, and um, musical guest was the uh, the also becoming quite terrific. Olivia Rodrigo. So let's talk about it. Um, I'm just gonna come right out with it. This episode was funny throughout and within. It had one of the funniest skits of the entire season, as well as one of the best musical guest performances of the entire season. So let's get into it. First of all, let's start with the musical guest. This this kid's 18 years old. Holy crap. <laughs> um, Olivia Rodrigo is an amazingly talented singer and actress. I like I said, again, High School Musical is my childhood. I started watching the show out of curiosity. I kind of got into it. I'm. It's now in the second season. I watched it on Friday, the second season premiere. Um, I quite like the show, and she's the lead in that, which is what led to all, you know, her co-star is Joshua Bassett, so I said it would be very awkward. She had two songs tonight. One of them is the one that myself and everyone knows, which is Driver's License, which she totally killed it live. It was a really great performance of a really great song. And then the other one she did, her second song, I have not heard before. I don't remember the name of it. It was something like Good For You or something like that. Really good. Um, I really liked it. Um, the, and also, it was different enough from Driver's License to work in regards to the sound. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, and also the performance was terrific. It kind of reminded me of, I mean, this is a total compliment. Um, a little bit, her voice in that second one kind of reminded me a little bit of Alanis Morissette and quite a bit, um, a little still bit of that Taylor Swift vibe that's from the first one, but also, it's going to be so specific to kids from the 2000s um, who grew up in the 2000s. Um, and, uh, Haley Williams, the lead singer of Paramore, a um, lot of lot of that's what you get from the song by Paramore from that song. Really terrific performance, um, and she was you know very very good on stage. Uh, really good presence, was having fun, and the song was so good. The songs were so good, and really nice voice. Um, she has a big career ahead of her, um, and it's off to a good start. She's terrific, um, terrific performer. Very, very good. Um, all right, now moving on to the show itself. Um, how were the sketches? Overall, pretty great. Um, even skits that on paper didn't quite work were saved by the enthusiasm of the cast. One in particular was like a like a Broadway type of, um, like a review, it's literally like a tribute dinner to like a Broadway star, where the idea is that um, Cesley Strong, Keegan-Michael Key, and, um, was it 80? No, it was Kate McKinnon. Sorry, it wasn't 80. It was Kate McKinnon. Are like these aging, you know, those who constantly get the lines wrong and come up with worse ones. Um, and it, on paper, it was like a... You guys remember the Space Pants skit? Maybe you don't. P, when Peter Dinklage hosted, they did a skit called Space Pants. And I kind of use this as, as the metric for silly skits that work because of the enthusiasm. Where it was him and Gwen Stefani, who was the musical guest that night. And they were doing this bit about where there's mobsters meeting up at a diner. But the guy was wearing pants that looked like uh, the Cosmos. And, he's, and he was constantly going, you know, stop, look at me, I'm wearing space pants. And first was like, it's kind of dumb. He's playing like a blonde wig, but he was enthusiastic. After a while, then Gwen Stefani showed up with a space skirt. And they were like singing about, we're wearing space pants. I was just like, <clears throat> it just, the, it got to me. Eventually it just wore me down. That was kind of this one. Um, but um, they did this kind of this really good one. In, um, the cold open was also quite funny, involving Anthony Fauci, played by Kate McKinnon, who was not Brad Pitt this time, Kate McKinnon, um, who was doing this whole thing about um, the recent lifting of, of certain you know places on masks, and they were doing it from like a group of CDC personnel who were doing it like a skit. It's like you ever know how like you have like in, in middle school and high school you had those like those like PSA skits where they'd come and they you know, like. The butt out from the South Park thing. Those kind of skits. The anti-smoking thing. That kind of thing. But it was for COVID. But the thing is, they didn't seem to get it. And the idea is that they kept going off on these really weird, surreal, and kind of gross tangents. Very funny. There's another one that really worked for me. Um, in Weekend Update, they were having um, a guy who really hasn't gotten a lot of play, but when he has, he's been quite good. Andrew Dismukes, young guy my age. A uh, little younger, maybe. And he was talking about his great-grandmother. And there was a bit where he's talking about one of the benefits of Disney's Greg is she had cable and he mentioned Brink which wow that was a deep cut and they even acknowledge it uh, the Disney Channel movie and I was like oh yeah Brink that was that was a crap back in the early 2000s kind of a weird deep cut uh, but yeah Eric Von Detten that was a, that was a good one um this is about gangs of inline skaters 
It's true. Um, and he gave what might be the best description of DCOMs collectively ever, which is he said, it was like, Kurt was like, what is this? What's a Disney Channel movie? And he goes, oh, Grandma, it's basically like middle school's really hard and also I'm a mummy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, funny. Um, some good stuff. Uh, the But by far, I'm saving this for less. The best skit of the night. the And one of the best skits of the season, the Muppet Show skit. They already got me pretty early on where they had, um, because it was supposed to be like the idea that, go watch, sorry, nose itches. Um, Disney, I look like Emily the Dumbass from Ready or Not. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. Just an inch. Um, but basically the idea is that it's, um. Because they have the Muppet Show on Disney Plus, and so they were doing this whole thing about it. You loved WandaVision, <laughs> but Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and coming soon, Hawkeye and his boring ass family. I was like, <laughs> all right, let's do this. For the Muppet Show, and they started off with like Melissa the Senior doing another, with a great Lily Tomlin impression, and they like, why am I here? <laughs> it's funny. But what made it even funnier is when the actual premise kind of came in, which is that if you guys remember Muppets, uh, the two old men, Sattler and Waldorf, who are the dudes in the balcony who always heckle. <laughs> Keenan, Keenan Thompson and Keegan Michael Key, they're like the two security guards of the venue, <laughs> just constantly berating the two old men. Like, shut up! <laughs> shut up right now! And he goes, and he just kept doing like the whole, you know, thing your parents would do when they were trying to, you know, get you to basically stop talking because you were running your mouth like, eh! Like, like he's just like, I was like, but we, first of all, you know, this show is terrible. It's like, well, you can kindly leave. <laughs> like, no one's stopping you. And he goes, but first of all, kindly leave. <laughs> and then finally, when he wouldn't stop, he, might, cause he just goes up there and starts beating this <laughs> freaking puppet and all these shiners. And I was like, this is hilarious. And just until finally getting Keenan to break, just beating the poor thing. I was going, oh, I told you, I told you this. Why do you make me do this? Just beating him up. And then Keenan's laughing. Second he gets out of here and goes, Your friend is crazy, by the way. And then they make the next joke. Keenan just craps. The other just starts ramming him against them. Oh, you know, just losing it. It just goes on. It's so ridiculous and so funny. Great skit. Hilarious skit. And then all the while, Kermit or whoever's playing Kermit is getting more and more annoyed. They keep calling him Kramer. And he goes, What? Funny, uh, very funny. Uh, Jim Henson would be proud. Very funny skit. Um, and when I say Jim Henson, I mean Wilkins Coffee Era. <laughs> Don't know what it is? Look it up on YouTube. It's uh, dark as all get out, and it's from the 50s. It's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> or watch The Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> Apparently that's his new arch nemesis after Teddy Ruxpin is the early Wilkins Coffee Kermit. Um, so overall, let's just end this. Overall, I really like this episode. The musical performances were good. The skits were funny. Everyone was on their game. I'll give it four and a half stars. This um, this was pretty... I almost want to get it a bump to five just for the Muppet Joe skit, but I, I feel like that would be unfair. So four and a half out of five stars. Pretty solid. Um, next week, we have what I believe is the season finale. It's around that time. Which is going to be hosted by Anya Taylor-Joy. Like her a lot. Um, musical guest will be Lil Nas X. Like him a lot. So that'll be, uh, be an interesting show. Um... That'll be next time, and until next time. And then also, oh, tomorrow, sorry, Profile, Monday's Top Gun. We're not quite done with the Palooza yet. Uh, all right. That'll all be next time, and until next time, Grant the Movie and TV Guide. I see it all. Happy to share it with you. All right. Love you all. Appreciate you all. I love you all. Class is missed. I love you, 3000. Oh, another thing. Uh, speaking of the early thing about American Housewife, also they canceled the unicorn. Why must you do this to me? <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Uh, take care. Good night. Bye.